they might not pick it in the first phase and it's probably going to yeah. get banned out in the second one. And you try to get the drafting advantage from that ban being quote unquote wasted by, uh, by team team spirit, team they have for so, having a so mid lane diamond is actually battle. quite nice because you can just melt them down. Okay. Well, Kiyotaka though, he's going to have the invoker picked up from here. Um, the hack, yeah, going to be yeah. on the Naga Centaur. Uh, and the uh, and the Skyrath Mage can hunt and maybe even run towards the Hawk who is in, ag in an aggressive position. That can give them the victory, but it it's not an easy lineup to pull off. So I'm uh, I'm a bit scared for them. But if they're fast enough, they have this capability of winning this game and then hitting that the Hawk timing that uh, that you're pretty much gunning for with this lineup. Yeah, and don't forget, guys, if you want to get involved, there is a banner below the stream. You can get your first $15 bet free if you are a new customer. But for now, it looks like in the river, um, as everyone groups up, it looks like everyone's grouping up as well to get that D ward off. Starstorm will be dropped here for coming through from the Marana, but it's still going to be the D ward here for Mira up against Mipashka. So a little bit of a starting advantage. And which way are these bounty runes going to go? Because there's some, a little bit of contest here, but it looks like Solo, he doesn't want to get involved with Lol and Mira. It looks like yeah, it is gonna. It's actually gonna be all four going the way of Team Spirit. That is a great start here for Spirit. Collapse clicks fast. You have the sleep on Miposhka, <laughs> and uh, you push the enemies back there in the mid lane. So very, uh, very nicely done coming out from Team Spirit. That is a big advantage for sure, for sure, especially when you have a Slark lane. Um, we're seeing that Yatoro now with the extra gold. You know, there's gonna be a lot of. Uh, a lot of region coming out from Miposhka so that Yatoro can be aggressive in this lane. And that is the idea. Make sure that Yatoro can survive through the harass that is undoubtedly going to be coming out from Antares. He needs to keep this Lark low. Yeah, and you can see here now Yatoro, I mean, we, we've seen the, the the Nightmare again coming out onto the center. The center, there isn't going to be a Yatoro pounce just yet, so he's not going to be able to get himself um, some free lockdown, some free stats. But Mero, is he really the hero that you want to be pouncing on this lane? Or do you just want to be straight focusing out the Scarath Mage anytime you can find that advantage? It's going to be a lot of magic damage coming out on Yatoro now. as well. Yatoro, he's not actually skilled anything up just yet. He's still trying to move himself away. If he needs that panic button on the pounce, he does have the skill to, to uh, skill it up if he needs it. They knew what they were up against, and they picked the Slark with the Bane. Solo? Solo? Solo, does he get himself out of this? There's not going to be a leap. He's level 1. He went for the Star Storm at level 1 now. Okay. Oh, Mira, does he have the regen to get himself away from this? The Furry Fire, it's going to keep him alive. Yep, he survives. But the biggest problem for me here is Yatoro. Uh, he underestimated the damage that the Centaur and the Skyrath Mage can do. I underestimated the damage. I thought he was going to be able to get a few hits onto Miero, but no, th this is going to be a farming lane. And we're seeing now that he wants to go for the Soul Ring. I think he's like, yeah, I get level six and I'm out of here as fast as possible. So, because <laughs> already it's a problem. But what happens when Miero is like level three, four? You have the double edge as well. Yatoro just dies. Yeah. So, do you then want to be sending the. Um the Bane to get as many jungle stacks as possible. Speaking of, there is going to be the Nightmare, but look at this, the magic damage again. Antares is going to be able to chase him down. This might actually be first blood here. A couple more right clicks, the cooldowns come off for the Scarath Mage. I don't actually think the Scarath has the mana, but it doesn't matter. Antares, Imposter tries to deny himself to the neutrals, but Antares will be able to clean that up. And first blood this time goes the way of Hellraisers. Oh, look at, look at this playing here with the range creep. Not going to be happening. You, you just can't do it. And now we look at the mid lane where Invoker, it's actually going to be having a solid time, but look at the denies on the tiny, you know? Yeah, I was looking at the CS, but then I look at the denies. That is not good. Invoker <laughs> is an experienced, hungry hero. Yeah, and again, well, top lane as well, the harass coming out, and Solo just being able to this time level 2, so he does potentially have the leaps, and you've got to be careful here. Once he gets to, like, level 3, level 4, you know, he's got that second point into the Star Storm here. It's going to be really hard for it to not be caught out in this top lane. Maybe the net, like I said, the net comes out. There is going to be the Star Storm as well, and Mira, he has to use his stick, trying to keep himself healthy here, and to hack, he's just... He's moving himself around. He's got that one point, that value point in the net that potentially sets up for some really early kills in this top lane. So how did Team Spirit have to play around this lane? Yeah, it's always pu pulling the lane back. That's it. And Magnus, Collapse, I don't think he's going to be going too aggressively with the uh, with the skewers. Ideally, you want to be yeah. uh, you want to be having that one to get away. Though Kiyotaka, he is uh, a Quaswax Invoker, so that it's not like you're going to be dealing with the Sunstrike as well. 
Oh, the Avatars in the mid lane there as well. Kiyotaka are going to be taking some harass, but yeah, like I said, I mean, he has the, the courses, so he has that regen build up there as well. So, Lel, um, he's going to be completely out of mana, just has to move himself back, has the bottle going towards the wand as well. Bottom lane, Nightmare to set up. Amero is just going to be able to come in with a stomp. Where's that damage as well? The double edge damage into Ar Antares. And again, Poshka just gets caught out, and the, the Scarath Mage finds a kill. Yep, this is uh, this bottom lane is a problem. And it is the lane that L Razors need to go well. The Centaur needs to have yeah. a good game. This is the playmaker. This is the one that is going to be making everything happen. And if the Slark is incapable of joining the fights, at least in terms of vision, in the in the early stages of the game, it's going to hinder the ability of, of uh, Team Sprit to, uh, to be as aggressive as they want to be in the early stages of the game. And that is just putting the cherry on top of the cake there in the mid lane. Kyo Taka committing the you know the tornado to make sure the tiny didn't get to the water and getting that deny off there as well and lol he's just suffering in this mid lane you, you can see that the last hits going the way it's only five last hits advantage going the way the invoker but the more mana you take away from lol you know he's not gonna be able to get these tree tosses in he can't get the avatar off to get the harasses out there as well so he, he's trying to get where he can but the the denies coming through from the invoker now as well stacking those up and tiny's just having again lol just seems to be having not a great mid lane you know the top lane? Are they going to be able to get the kill? And I say they, the hack, just in his illusions, he take down Mira. Yep, uh, Strength Heroes, not very well known for their high armor with the Riptide there. He just uh, gets taken down easily. But I wanted to talk about this mid lane a little bit more. Man, I loved how Kiyotaka played it. When playing against the Tiny, you want him to attack you with the tree. Because if he is attacking the creeps, he is going to be denying everything. That's what happened at the start of the lane. But you get more points in Quas, you get into his face, you burn his mana down so you know that you're not going to die. You take the hits and then you just bully him. And he has been doing it over and over again. And Laurel, he went to the base, he TP'd back to the lane, and again, he gets absolutely smashed. Yeah, and you, like you say, he, he's um, he's having to expand these tree tosses to try and, well, not even commit to the range creeps, just to commit to any anything he can find in terms of last hits here. And Kiyotaka, he's just looking for the denies, he's looking to make it a little bit harder for LOL. And so, is this going to be... I mean, because he's got a glove of haste, he's got a little bit of extra attack speed here. Um, getting the boots flying out now as well for the tiny. Is it still like the first item blink that LOL wants to be going towards, or is there something he needs to get himself um, back kind of like into a decent net worth up against the Invoker. I think you still go the blink. You're coming back to this game by killing the Sky and the Mirana. Speaking of which... Sky... Is it going to be have one more right-click? Maposhka the Furry Fire trying to deny himself. No, he didn't even throw out the right-click onto the neutrals, but the Tornado coming through, and it looks like Kiyotaki might just get that straight-up revenge here right off the bat. Maposhka hiding himself through the trees, maybe trying to juke out, but the mind game's coming through. Kiyotaki knows he's waiting for that, but it doesn't matter. He, that was beautifully done. I love... Yeah, I love that he held the right click there on the neutral. So I think Kiyotaka was, you know, maybe then goes for the right click to try and pull the aggro, but it, he's not throwing the right clicks out. And just both of them just stood there waiting for that. Whoever's, you know, going to break first. Speaking about breaking, Yutaro, does he get himself away from this one? The Dark Pact, he's trying to get himself away, but Centaur in this lane, he's just having a great time. And this isn't going all the way Slark wanted at all. He can't get level 6. He needs that level 6 as fast as possible. Then it's going to be fine. I mean, Team Sprit, they shouldn't be too mad about how the laning stage went. And they're still farming super well. At least Collapse is having like a grand time. And Slark, even though, you know, he's struggling a little bit, he's being pressured, he still hasn't died and still mm. is, uh, is farming relatively well when you look at the net worth. Yeah, no, he's not falling, falling uh, uh, behind at all here, Yutaro here. But there's still going to be Maposhka again. The harass coming through. Mero, does he want to maybe try and chase him down? That's a really nice timing there on the Nightmare to dodge that stomp off. But it just means that Mero's going to be able to come in. You're getting the double edge off. The pull came through. And Mero just says, thank you very much. I'll take all of this extra gold. And thank you for pulling that through for me. Uh, there for a second, it looked like Hellraisers were uh, destroying the laning phase, but actually, you know, when you look at the net worth, it's it's actually pretty okay for Team Spirit, even great, to be honest. Even the Tiny, compare him to the Invoker, there's not a huge difference between the two. And Kiyotaka, with the missing of the, uh, of the move towards the top lane and not getting anything, is going to be a problem, but now he's coming again. Oh, look at this, yeah, the top lane, the cookie comes through, Solo, the will still clean up Mira and uh, Yutaro. He's not looking super healthy, but does have that level 6 now, so he's going to have that regen right up there. And yeah, you can see how quickly he's getting himself back up to pretty much full health. And it's just... 
Like you say, it's not going bad for the Slark. It was it was a little bit of an awful start with Harass coming out, um, but it seems like Mero is more happy to find the farm um, than trying to force the Slark out of the lane here. Arrow is actually going to connect onto the Tiny. So Hellraiser's just backed himself up underneath the Tier 1 tower. But do Spirit actually want to go for more here? They're going to see the stack now as well. The Nightmare comes out solo, though, with a leap away. It looks like he's going to be... Yeah, he's going to be fairly safe. Just getting himself away here from Lel Amaposhka as the hack. He sees that stack going down, but there's nothing he can really do about this and collapse. He wants to take control of this top lane again, what, for the third time in a row. Is Laurel gonna dodge the Blink Dagger? Man, that would be so cool to see. Maybe he goes like for an Echo Saber and a uh, and a Aghanim Scepter just straight up because he has a Magnus mm. in the uh, in the game. I don't think I agree with it. I still think he can go for the Blink, but it, it would be quite interesting to see. Yeah, I mean, Collapse gets a kill onto Solo. You can see that, again, Collapse not having trouble taking down those supports. And guys, don't forget, there is a, a banner below the stream. So if you want to click it, get yourself a free $15 bet as a new customer there. That is available to you. But back down on this bottom lane. Itaro, he's throwing tips out. He's even trying to get into uh, Antares' mind here on this Skyrath as he just continues to farm up, finding that net worth. And he's just a little bit far. And he's got the Nullifier queued up first item. It, that, does he really want to be going for that? Or because we do see um, sometimes first item BKB, first item into to the um, the Agnum Scepter there as well. So what is it that Slark does actually want to go for? I really want to see an axe. I mean, maybe Falcon Blade before it, but uh, yeah, I, I don't see an Nullifar as that great of an item. I mean, I liked how they disassembled it in the previous game. Or he disassembled. Uh, no, he had disassembled the radiance actually. So yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not really sure about the uh, first item nullifier. Okay, Kiyotaka, he might be able to try and make a move. There's going to be the EMP coming through now as well with that Stampede. He's going to be able to get himself away because it looks like he needs to run himself. The arrow is going to be dodged by everybody. And now Lars is going to be coming in with the Star Storm and Posh is going to be taking that to the face. But the right click, no, he's going to be away. Nobody committed onto the right click. The RP was teased but not thrown out just yet. Avalanche, he doesn't even need to throw the RP to get the kill onto Kiyotaka. And now they chase it onto Solo. Solo, can he get himself away from this? Star Storm going to fall down once again. But Solo, the cookie comes out. He gets the leap. He waited for it. And he gets that perfect timing just to get himself away from the cookie. Hey, usually, is he pro players they're waiting for the enemies to throw out their spell before they uh before they blink out before they leap out or whatever and sometimes it really does come to bite you back but at least he forced out the cookie i don't think he necessarily needed to uh to do it but you're gonna be feeling really nice with that victory and i mean team spirit this Magnus has been doing such a great job, laning stage-wise. There were two rotations from the Invoker to the top lane. He dodged both of them, even baited an Invoker close to death one time, and now he comes to the mid lane to change things up. Yeah, and it looks like... Um, I think you're to go. The Fiend's Rip comes out as well into the center, but it looks like Yutaro's more bothered about farming, so it's going to leave Solo to get a point-blank arrow into the Star Storm. Was that actually follow? We're going to come through the Nightmare now as well. The Mystic Flurry is going to be off the mark, but it looks like still Bane will fall, and Mero will finally get involved and pick up that kill. You're still happy. You forced out the rotations towards the bottom lane. Uh, Hellraiser seemed yeah. like they don't want to fight there because Laurel is already pressuring down the mid lane. And that is the thing. Right now, what the Inspirators are doing, it's daytime. We are creating space. And once the nighttime comes, then you will die. And uh, that is pretty much the time where Laurel will be having his Blink Dagger. And I don't know what the Magnus is going for, but I'm going to assume that first he's going to be going for the Guardian Greaves. Yeah, and you can see, like I say, Lal, he, he didn't actually skip over the MP into the tornado comes out. And Lal, he's going to be losing all of his mana. But he's still got himself the trick. And that's kind of all the tiny needs at the minute. You know, finding that farm, finding the extra, extra gold. And do you think then, once this tiny blink is out, you know, is he... Is he far enough ahead that he can just go support hunting yep. because like you say the solo Scarth mage both really squishy supports and it, it, yeah there's definitely going to be going support hunting but look at hellraisers they get the tiny's mana down and they immediately run towards the bottom lane but the thing is team spray they know the slark gets away from the bottom lane and now they're going to be going into the mid here to fight yeah, the cookie comes out. Lal, there's going to be another tornado into the MP. Cold Snap coming through now as well, trying to control, control onto the tiny. And Lal, can he get himself away from this? He is a big, tanky boy. Mystic Flur comes out, so he has to dodge back, but he just dodges back into the waiting arms of Mero. And Mero claims that kill. Man, that blink dagger of the uh, of the centaur, just perfect timing to get it. Because, again, Hellraisers, they get the mana down, they run towards the bottom lane. Yatoro knows. But Hellraisers, like, we have our blink timing. It is the thing that's going to turn things around. If, if there was no blink, Tiny doesn't die there. And it's actually Team Spirit making a perfect move. But because the blink dagger is active, it changes things. Yeah, and Collapse again. The first 13 minutes, he takes down his tier 1 tower. And I, we've not seen him lose this lane once today. 
you know, all three games, he is just by the 13, 14 minute mark, taking that tier one tower and just invited Hellraisers on to put pressure onto him. And he, he just doesn't. He like he, he nobody pressures him. He just gets that free farm, free lane, maybe even find a couple of stacks in the jungle now as well. And what really could Hellraisers have done to, to you know put the pressure on him, maybe shut him down? Or do you just in this game or the cookie comes out in the mid lane, they might be able to take on the milk and once again the avalanche is gonna be there. The reveal with the dust as well. Do they have the driveway? Ah, he's even gonna be committed onto this as well. But solo, there's gonna be it's just gonna be two heroes, the most of the kiss is even being dropped, and it looks like it's gonna be Kira Taka going down, being dropped by Lyle here, and it's just gonna be a great extra bit of gold for the recovery. But was that extra setup of Hellraisers? What can they do here? They've got three heroes around. Can they go for another arrow? They the stomp from Mero to take it on. Lal. Again, Lal, he's a big tanky boy. The cookie comes out now as well. The net's going to be there. Do they take down the tiny? They are going to be able to take down the tiny. Might even take the Utara down now as well. He has to get himself away from that fight, away from the damage, but there is going to be a new, new skewer back. Mero into the waiting clutches. And Lal, Mira, as well as Utara, collapse, even splitting the kill there onto Mero. Oh man, this is so cool to watch, like how the teams are using their spells and even bringing their carries to find some impact in the game. The Hawk knows that his team needs the help, especially in defending that mid lane tower. You're seeing how much emphasis Team Spirit are putting in that tower, dying before the nighttime comes, before the Tiny has the blink. Tiny has the blink, so the blink reveal will have to be used for their tower to fall, but it's still very close between these two teams. You're seeing that both of them know exactly what they need to delay on one side and on the other, what you need to take that even the carries are joining the fray and for me it seems like this lark is really committing onto that nullifier and uh okay that's uh that's cool but i i'm still not 100 convinced of the build yeah it's questionable not by me you know i'm too bad you know i i'm too much of a scrub to actually question it but you know uh, my analyst has some questions and maybe yutaro is going to be able to answer right back on those as we're going to see a smoke rotation coming through here but do they have the jump who are they going to be able to get on top of now as well did you actually get on top of well the cookie comes out once again so the mystic flare ancient seal it's not going to be enough damage to take him down but with the stampede mero will be able to get the kill the arrow that won't connect there from solo so no follow-up kill for hellraisers I was certain Spirit go towards the mid lane, but they got greedy and they wanted to defend this uh, this bottom lane. But if our viewers are greedy, well, we have $15 street that they can get if they click on the banner below. So uh, feel free to do it if you're a new customer. But this move from Team Spirit, it's going to cause them because this was the tiny reveal. This was your big break with which you take down the mid lane tower and start playing the map super aggressively, but your main hero goes down. Yeah, and I've made a boo-boo. It's going to be a Radiance. It's not a, uh, oh, a Nullify oh, for the Slark. Okay. I, I, yeah, I, I just saw, I was like, that, Slarks don't buy Radiance, so my, my brain just defaulted. But mid lane, they might be able to get the kill into Kira Attacker. Again, the multiple kiss is going to be flying through. And Mero can get himself away from this one. Flying through here. Invoker will be taken down. And it looks like Antares as well can get himself away from this one. Lol. He's not got the blink dagger for another couple of seconds. But there will be the cookie to chase now as well onto Mero. And the damage coming through from Yutaro. Does he have it to take him down? Collapse with the double kill. It might be a triple now as well with the skewer in. Gets himself the triple kill underneath the tier 3 tower. Uh, yo, Laurel, come to the mid lane. This is where we fight. No, no, I'm going to the bottom lane. Okay, you go to the bottom lane. I'll <laughs> deal with this myself. Double RP, skewer back, Mortimer's kisses. They get multiple kills, and there it is. Team Spirit, get the tower down. Yeah, it's going to be a Radiant Slark. Not something I would have expected, but definitely something interesting to see. Yeah, I, uh, I saw the uh, the Sacred Relic you said, Nullifar. Like, not even thinking about it. Yeah, but that is, uh, that is quite interesting. I guess he's going to be dissembling it at some point. Yeah, maybe. The chase down onto Mirror now as well. They get the kill. And Kiyotaka is going to be able to claim that one. And yeah, so Solo. Where does he want to go? I mean, if he comes too far forward, he he is going Solo. But again, if they don't know where Lala is, they are going to be able to see him underneath the ward. So maybe a little bit safer here for the Marana. So he's countering the Naga Siren with the Radiance on a Slark. We uh, did see, you know, the uh, Life Stealers get Radiances, but the Slarks, not really. And now he dies. And I'm, I'm not sure that... I mean, even Nullifar or the Radiance, it doesn't matter. You're going to be super squishy and you die every single... It's nighttime and you lost your life. What's going to be happening when the daytime comes? Yeah, and you can see Maposhka here now as well. The Urn doing some tick damage with that cold snap. Anything to stop him is in the trees. Just going for the TP so he will be able to get himself back to base. And it, so, the, But, I mean, this sets up now for Hellraiser to take that portion of the jungle um go for some d wards as well if that's what they want to be doing collapse how's he looking he actually did go for the guardians greaves here now as well snap fire going towards the uh that four staff as magnus he actually won't see a four staff of his own here as well after the greaves so anyways team spirit 
they are 2k gold behind, but they did open up the map, so that is big. The thing is that there's Slark, mm -hmm. even with the Radiance, he's not going to be able to fight. We talked about, you know, you get heavy magical damage against tanky heroes, but the Slark with this kind of a build, he has no stats. So he just dies every single time, and that is a problem. So Team Spirit, they really need good vision right now, but again, nighttime is coming to an end. You don't have that super aggressive vision. We're seeing that Hellraisers are protecting their big jungle, and whoever shows themselves there, it's just going to be blown up. Yeah, and I mean, the hack, how's he looking? He's going towards, he is getting towards that Manta style, so that's going to be a nice timing. And if they find another good fight, in fact, they're going to go for the Moonlight Shadow. So they are going to go for a rotation, see what they can find here now as well. And at what point do either team need to be looking towards getting there? Like, I mean, Radiance is there, so that's up. I was going to miss, though. The Nightmare's coming up onto the high ground now as well, so does Itaro want to go? Hell raises under vision. The, the RP on the back lines, he's going to get the double drive back coming through onto the Scarath as well, but Mero is going to be able to get the Stampede. They're still going to be able to get the kill onto the Scarath Mage, though. But if you you committed an RP for that, Hellraiser's surely are happy. Um, obviously not super chuffed, but they've got to be somewhat happy that they traded a Scarath for an RP. Uh, the thing is that they haven't taken down the ward. They still can't play the bottom part of the map. They got pushed out. So it's not that you only got a Scarath yeah. kill, you got the uh, this part of the map going your way. Okay, and uh, they might. Okay, the hack just gets taken down. Without the so they would. Yeah, we, without that being committed though as well. Still three. Well, excuse me, two ultimates because Tiny's is a passive, but still two ultimates, two big ultimates on the side of his team to are up here. And uh, again, at what point, if you take another fight like that on Team Spirit, do you start to look towards Roche? Uh, your lineup is not good at Roche, so that's not going to be something you're cunning for. You're going for kills right now, left and right. Nope. I love this there as well, Lal. He just stands right next to Maposhka. Maposhka does go down in the end, but Lal was just buying so much time for the Fiends group because there was no arrow that could connect. And now the multiple kisses are going to be flying through as well. They get the kill onto two. Can they make it even three? As Solo, he's taking a lot of damage here. Where are those leaps away? The cookie comes out. Going to be stunning him. He turns himself back around. He is going to be taken down, and Lal gets that kill. Five, three, and five. So not a great start for the Tiny, but he's more than making up for it now in this game. That is a problem, and okay, this this I like. He's Yatoru is going for a BKB. He understands just how dangerous it is. Tiny could nah, he's fine. Like he has two points in his ulti. He's not taking any damage now. It's the hog that needs to run away. This is just uh, not looking good for Hellraisers right now. They didn't punish the Slark and his greedy build, and now he's going to be having a BKB in no time. Yeah, and guys, don't forget the banner below the stream if you want to get yourselves a free fifteen dollar bet in this game. But yeah, I like the. Um, the Nagasaran just won, you know, he throws that net out, tries to get aggressive onto Lala, turns around with the tree and just says, What illusions? You know, they were here a second ago, and the Nagasaran's just like, Okay, well, I'm gonna back away, have a nice day, we'll see you next team fight. Lark is being hunted again, but Yatoro knows. No one was throwing on the bottom lane, and he knows this is scary. This is the death camp for the carries. Sometimes you're greedy with it, sometimes you're not. So he's uh, gonna do it very smartly. And now he's gonna see that he was spotted and just jumps out. His team is coming to help. Yeah, backing him up all the way. The RP is back up here now as well. They have that smoke gank already up. So who are they gonna be able to find here? Lol, looking for that blink in to toss back anybody into this to the waiting arms of the rest of the team. Oh, who's actually found? He's found the Scarath. He takes down the Scarath, pops it straight away, and now he wants to go even further. EMP is going to be coming to the other. Collapse, he doesn't get anyone back in the skewer. What's he going to be able to do? Mero, he's on the front lines trying to chase down. The Stampede comes out now as well, but the toss up right back into the air, back onto the Invoker now. And can they go even further? Because Collapse, he still holds that RP. The damage, though, is going to be a really nice stump. They've got the Lyle, they've taken him down. Can they go even further onto the Scarath? Yeah, the damage coming through from the Scarath with that buyback. The Mystic Flirt comes out. They clean up three heroes. Greed from Team Spirit, and you talked about Roche, but Hellraisers, they're much better at taking it down. They have the Invoker, they have the Naga Siren, it's more than enough damage to take this big boy down. And Team Spirit, they're not alive, they didn't have their BKBs just yet, so you should be happy with one pick off, you move back, you farm the map. One pick off, move back, farm the map. But they thought we we're gonna win a team fight, and the Hawk comes at the, uh, at the nick of time, the buyback comes through, and now they have an Aegis. Hellraisers, they were looking like they were on the back foot, but now they're looking really, really strong. And actually, he wants to go for a butterfly on the uh, on the Naga's Iron. Not sure about that one, the Radiance will be taking down his illusions. I expected the heart, so I'm, uh, I'm curious to see if he'll go through it. Maybe he's just relying on more damage. Yeah, you can see now that uh, Yutaro is going to go back for the Accept, like you say, you wanted to see. Um, 
collapse in that last fight just could not get a, a good position for the RP. So it, Hellraiser has taken, like I say, a really good advantage into the Roche pit. And now uh, Kiro Taki even putting pressure onto the tier one tower. So Spirit, is this, I mean, you've got the BKB up now for the Slark. Is that go time for them? Or do you really want to wait it out until that Agnum Scepter is up? Um, you can go, you can fight. Currently, it's a problem because it's daytime, but it's going to change fairly soon. So we can expect Hellraisers to be the ones aggressive for the next minute or so. And then uh, Team Spirit will try to get a few pickoffs to just delay this Aegis as much as possible. Yeah, <laughs> Lal sees the incoming tornado, just like, nope, well, none of that. Just blinks himself right back towards the uh, the rest of the Radiant Jungle, towards that tier 2 tower. The arrow is on the mark as well, so if that tornado had it connected, Potentially looking at Lal being taken down again. And Yutoro is going to be a problem. They they didn't mm -hmm. punish his greed whatsoever. And Hellraisers are ahead currently. They are looking stronger at this point if it would be a full 5 versus 5. But this Lark is on par with the, uh, with the Naga Siren. Naturally, the Naga farms much faster and he ch switches it up. He goes for a heart. Okay, I like that the Hawk is doing this heart into Bloodthorn. I think Bloodthorn is the damage item you need. Yep, top lane. Akira taking a lot of damage coming through in multiple cases because I land. Is he going to be able to snipe him? No, he goes the wrong direction. Akira Taka with the CB. No. Oh, ho, 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 ho. really good full staff in there from Mirate. I'll help secure the kill. He didn't see him there with the multiple cases, so he go knows he's Duke left instead of right. Amazing force to have to close the gap and find that kill. Oh, that was just beautiful coming out from Mira. He didn't, because he clicked, when you click the Mortimer's Kisses, how many times you click, the next one will go that way, right? Mm. So he clicked on the right, and the Invoker only then got out of the Ghost Walk. So he knew that he was in the trees, but there was nothing he could do about it in terms of Mortimer's Kisses. But in terms of the uh, Scatter Blast, he found them quite nicely there. Yeah, you see, now this opens up again, this Tier 2 Tower being pressured. Jitaro coming in now as well. He's... Uh, Actually, how far away from the... Okay, so he, so he has the, the staff of... Uh, yeah, so he's not too far away from the full scepter. Yep, that's uh, that's big. That's what he's waiting for, so that he doesn't have to BKB immediately when he goes into the fight. That he doesn't have to ulti. You could see for... Uh, until now, he, he would always jump in and immediately drop down the ulti. Now he has the BKB, and then he will have an axe. So he can actually... Uh, think about how he wants to do it. Will he go for the ulti first? Will he go for the BK first? Will he poke in Dark Pact and get himself out? See, he has options on Yotoro, and he is one of the players that always, you know, when he has multiple options, he always chooses the right one. Mm -hmm. And now, I mean, we're looking through, there's going to be the smoke coming out from Hellraiser. Who did they find the jump on? It's going to be the Bane. Stampede going to be used now as well as the sounds coming through from the Naga Siren. So they are going to be able to get the kill. And Kiritek actually gets the kill on Tamira there as well. Solo taking down the Observer Ward. So everybody getting a little bit of something here. And we didn't speak about it, but the Magnus has that shard up as well. So the Horn Tosses are going to start to come out. And that's going to be a little bit harder on Hellraisers. You know, they've got to get that position position in perfectly here against the Magnus. He had it for quite some time right now, but hasn't been able to find the right grab. So uh, hasn't been looking the greatest for collapse in this game. Even the one where he went for the Marana, he missed the Horn Toss. That's not catching her in time. Yeah. And did he actually got? I mean, Yutaro's going to be shown again in this lane. They might be able to make a move happen, but he does have that pounce back behind the, the tier 2 tower if he needs it. About, was a 300 gold from finishing the full lags as well? So he's going to have that second charge on the pounce. Um, the extra distance as well. He needs to get himself out. Panic button just presses it, immediately dives himself away. But it looks like Hellraisers, again, they want to just control where Spirit can farm. And they just come in, try and control in this bottom part of the map. Maybe put pressure onto the tier 2 tower here as well. The Hawk is getting into critical mass territory. This is the thing. He hit his timing. 25 minutes, he had the uh, he had the heart. Then he farms super fast with it as well. And he's going to be getting his butterfly as well. Butterfly heart, that is kind of the time where you're sending illusions. And it's very tough for the enemies to deal with. Luckily, the Slark has the radiance that he went for. But it is still not easy to deal with. I mean, Team Spirit have ways to do it. But... They can, they have AoE damage. They don't have like single target damage to kill illusions. So you can just send one to one side, one to the other, and it's going to become problematic. Yeah, you see Slark as well. He self TZs on the cliff, you know, just looking to get a little bit of scouting on the ward, see if any, any wards are up there. And now he's going to be able to ping a couple out as his passive will wear off. So the D ward comes out. The Horn Toss now as well onto the Scarath Mage. Do they have enough damage? Of course they have enough damage to get the kill. 
Yep. Um, it might be coming close to gem territory for Team Spirit. They're doing a good job dewarding with the Slark on their side, but having the gem would be ideal. You're playing against the Mirana and the Vision. You know, you're going to know roughly where it is with the gem, so you can get those down. And Hellraisers, Vision is of key importance for them. But the thing is, you're going to be needing the Naga Siren to play around that Vision so that she can defend it. Because Naga, she's not a fast hero to move around the map. She has to be played around with, and pushing in the lanes is something that she needs. Yeah. So look at it, taking a lot of damage. Moonlight Shadow is going to be there now as well. The song comes through. Do they actually want to try and set up here? It looks like they just might back themselves away because the rest of Team Spirit rotating in just to back up onto Yutaro in case there was a counter gank coming out. So it is just going to be a song and away, and everybody inside of Hellraiser's uh, getting away safe. Well, not Scarath, but the Scarath was already dead, so that doesn't count. It's all about speed now. <laughs> Yeah, and they even get the kill onto the Invoker. What can they do to follow this up now? Looks like Lal as well as Yutaro just want to back themselves away. And do they want to then put pressure onto this mid tier too? You know, is it a case of Spirit hunting in a pack to make sure they can find something? Or do they still just want to be looking for a quick pick and then back themselves out? Spirit are so fast in moving around the map, especially the Slark with the Shadow Dance. He's pretty much max movement speed, so he can always be there. So it doesn't matter when where or how do you have all of your heroes together you just need to make sure that you're not under enemy vision and uh you know yeah. Miposhka is trying to make that happen but he dies this time around the mystic flur way too much uh, for the bane to, to step up to solo and yeah so the the damage coming through and antares gets himself a kill as he respawns 17 to 21 oh who are they gonna be able to find here Yutara, do they want to try and make a dive Arrow's not going to connect. The Stomp, not going to be in range there either. And it might actually be the Horn Toss in. So yeah, Mero comes way too far forward from the rest of his team. And he's going to pay the price because of it. Gets taken down. And now they might have rubber extended here on the side of Hellraisers. Do they want to follow up even more? Lyle's going to try and chase down the Lotus Sub on top of him now as well. And the Arrow's not going to connect. So he might be able to make something happen if the Ghost Walk was off on the Invoker. Uh, a few mistakes there happened from, from Hellraisers during these five minutes of the night time. Uh, the start of their, they even had the Aegis, you know, at the start of the night time. And I thought they were mm -hmm. going to be planting a ward deep into the enemy jungle, playing around it with the, with the Hawk pushing out the waves. But what they did is that they tried to spread the map a little bit, and the speed of Team Spirit is just insane. So they take down all of the vision, and even though, you know, Hellraisers, now even if they would smoke, you're not gonna, it's not going to be easy to find anyone. And you're just playing uh, the map very scared right it's daytime and you're like okay they don't have the nighttime vision advantage any longer but the thing is they have a vision advantage just because of the words on the map you don't have a single one and that is a big issue for you especially at a timing where your naga sign should be the strongest on the map yeah and how is he looking now as well so it is going to be the um butterfly coming out for the naga Sara, not too far away from that it seems um but yeah, so you talked about the timings here. Is there anything Hellraisers can do to get back on track in terms of you know looking for objectives, or do they need to be looking for the fights? You know, what is it that Hellraisers need to be doing on the on this map? Uh, play around a ward. Uh use the ward to send out illusions on the lane. The the thing is the same, and for spirit of to show themselves on those lanes. So that's when you hunt them. That is how it mm -hmm. has to be. If you are the hunted here for Hellraisers, you stand absolutely no chance. And there's the gem on the Slark. You won't have wards unless you're defending them. And Hellraisers, I think that's their biggest error in this game. Oh, the dive in, though. They're going to be able to get the solo. Solo, can he get himself away from this one? The cookie? It doesn't matter. He's straight up dead. Yep. This is going to continue. Unless, unless Hellraisers just uh, understand that their situation in on the game they might understand it but they could feel like they can't do it you know even if you would be on the bottom lane with multiple heroes there is a good chance that because you're against the uh, tiny especially with the empower that he takes your towers down so maybe that is what is bothering them right now how do we control an area when the tiny will just walk up to the tower and kill it so they'll uh yeah. they'll have to find another way it's not it's not an easy place for them by any means Okay, well, the cold snap's going to be coming through here, and Yutaro gets caught out with the Hex now as well. He gets the BKB off with the Shadow Dance, so he's going to be able to keep himself alive. The follow though, the net comes out onto the Magnus. Do they want to try and go the Multiple Kisses? Because the net was turned right back around. But the Multiple Kisses out of range. He's still going to be taking damage even through the song, and now he does get in range to cancel it off. He's going to be able to get the TP away here, but the hack that was so close. Very close, first for Yutaro to die, then for the Hawk. The Hex coming into play really for the Invoker. You know, so he has the shard, he has the hex, he has the ability to burst people down quite easily, and Yotoro almost died there, but almost isn't gonna be enough. 
No, and now Lol is going to be able to come in against those tree tosses off there as well, doing a lot of damage onto Solo. Solo has to back himself away. The triple silence onto Lol, and that's not going to be enough to silence him here either as he tries to go in. But the, the Ogre Totem, actually, it's going to be another drive back now as well. They get the stomp back, but Mero. Can he get himself out? Yes! Sunstrike as well as the, the Mystic Flur does the job to finish it off. Mira will still go down in return. So an offlaner for an offlaner. Yeah, both teams are going to be okay with that. I think Hellraisers. The thing, the problem is that they're... Uh, their most important hero died, really. He he needs to be the mm. one to, uh, to be jumping in first. And he got a really good jump. The thing is, when he jumped in, Laurel at the same time jumped into the back line. So there was no follow-up. He was tossing trees onto the supports and they couldn't get on top of the uh, the beautiful hoof stomp that was made there. So now Team Spirit, they know that there's no uh, center so they can go very aggressively. And the pounce comes in. There's going to be the Fiends group as well. The full staff not going to be able to save the invoker for now. The sounds comes out. Itaro, though, he just pops that BKB. He has the reveal as well. Going to be able no to get mana. the kill onto the invoker. They're going to be able to go even further onto this now as well. Itaro, the BKB will be wearing off sometime soon. So they've got that chase. But he has that second pounce. He looks like he is going to be able to get himself away. I'm going to posh get back him up just in case he needs it. So Itaro, the aggro gets pulled. He's trying to go back in for no. In fact, there's going to be the song coming through. And they've just got to retreat here, Hellraisers. Because the rest of Team Spirit showing up. And Hellraisers just can't contest onto that. That. You don't have the invoker, you don't have a center, you don't have lockdown. And that means there's no way that you're going to be getting kills. Slark now, he gets some of his mana given back and he wants to go forward. We're seeing the game is super even, but Hellraiser is still very tough for them to play. Nighttime is coming again. This is going to be a main issue. You don't have vision and it's going to be nighttime against the Slark. Yeah, you can see there's going to be a really nice drag back here now as well, coming through from the Magnus. Can they get Mero as well? It's going to be a really nice kill streak going the way of Team Spirit. Three heroes dead, and it looks like Itaro doesn't want to stop just yet. He's pushing on, trying to get aggressive onto this tier three tower. Yep. You're, you're trying to force out another mistake from Hellraisers. If they get close here, the, uh, the Magnus will be catching them. Luckily for them, Collapse is still walking towards there, but he'll be there fairly soon. So if you want to continue going forward, you definitely can. Yeah, the Sunstrike says hello, but neither one of um, the Magnus or the Slark, they're really going to be bothered. In fact, Yataro just says, hey, you know, nice Sunstrike, you know, you, you hit us, great, great position on that. So have a tip. I think... Not trying to tilt him in the slightest. I think they were just trying to uh, see if these spirits are on the high ground there. Mm -hmm. And where they're going. Like, are they going Roche or are they waiting for us? So, that sound strike does give some very nice uh, info to Hellraisers. The thing is, do you come towards Roche to defend it in time? There's a lot of physical damage here. Yeah, they absolutely know what's happening here now as well. Lal even going to be using that uh, multiple tree toss. Um, as Yutaro, he did take that arrow, but he had the dark pact as well. So, he was just able to, to purge it off straight away. And you can see Lal, yeah, with the right clicks coming through from the tree. Uh, he's got that crit stick building towards the Silver Edge now as well. And Aegis. Goes the way of Yutaro. It's going to be shot. I think that's a shot for Lal. Yep. Was it? Yep. Yes. So permanent tree now as well. The tree volley going to be doing a lot of damage once he gets himself into a, a nice wooded area. And yeah, uh, Hellraisers, they've lost out on a couple of objectives now. How do they recover? Because it seems like every time they take a fight, it's at least an even trade in terms of heroes going down. And Hellraisers, they need to get themselves you know, maybe one or two in a fight above what Team Spirit can pick back off. Currently, they're okay. They managed to push in the bottom lane, so that's big. Uh, the Naga Siren will get a Hex, and then it's going to be allowed for him to have the potential to kill a hero on his own. And I think that changes things quite a lot for Hellraiser. So they're they're not going to be too mad. The, the main thing right now is dodging this smoke from Team Spirit, and it is something that you should definitely be aware of that is happening. Yeah, so... It looks like Collapse. He wants to lead the line again. He has the RP up. He's got those Guardian Greaves in 13 seconds now as well. Hauntos is available going towards the BKB as well. And the smoke. I mean, Yutaro's just going to show. He's just like, saw the smoke. I've got a stack to farm here. It's three minutes of just uh, for Hellraisers being a little bit on the defensive. They don't want to do it. They think they can fight. Under enemy vision, it's going to be tough, especially into an Aegis. I I'm not sure you want to be doing this right now if you're Hellraisers. Yeah, and they just Mark continue is to push out. Uh, they're going to go, though. The Hex comes out. The dive's going to be now as well. The, S the Sunstrike, it's going to be enough to pop that Aegis, but you've got Collapse. He's waiting in the wings. He's like, oh, please group up. Just please stick at five to try and take down Yutaro again. You know, just ignore the man behind the trees or the um, the Magnus behind the trees. He would love to have dove in the great RP off, haunt us back into his team, and just cleaned up Hellraiser's big one. Big one for sure for Hellraisers that they got that kill. They assumed that Spirit are going to be a bit greedy and not playing around the Slark. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, now the TP's coming out. Yutaro, <laughs> he's caught in the trees, pounces himself out to try and find out anyone in Hellraiser's, but they, he just split the wickets between the two heroes, and now they were able to TP out, and he has to TP himself back to a, a position where it's not caught in the trees. Man, if that that was an attempt onto the Slark, onto the Tier 2, even if it would have been deeper for Team Spirit, they would have been faster to react. But because it was a Tier 1, it ended up being such a good move from Hellraiser. So this second Roche from Team Spirit is just not going to be mattering all that much here because Hellraiser's already took it down. And uh, they should be happy, especially with the Naga Siren now. She'll have that, uh, uh, that Hex that we talked about. Yeah, there's the song as well. Do they want to try and set up? It looks like it's just going to be another, again, defensive song coming out from the side of Hellraisers. And Yutaro, he did have that BKB available. You know, he's back off cooldown. So if he does get jumped and needs to pop the BKB, it should be there. But yeah, it looks like Hellraisers just going to be happy with taking a little bit of farm and moving themselves back into the base with the song. Well, this is this has become a very close game because Hellraisers have been able to survive through the nighttime through the Aegis. That was the timing of Team Spray that you were gunning for. The Naga Siren might become too big of a problem. You're seeing how her farm is ramping up, and now you're gonna have the Hexes, you're gonna have the Blood Thorns. A lot of things are gonna be coming through, allowing the, the uh, Naga Siren to get the solo kills. And both the Invoker and the Naga Siren are very dangerous right now, and their ability to move around the map relatively safely is there. One with the song, the other one with being very fast around the map with the ghost walk and now it's giving ability to hellraisers to fight around the map even if they don't have the vision yeah so i mean let's see what they can do with the space here team spirit being afforded to them everybody it looks like nearly everybody's going to be able to get a shot here on the side of team spirit as well so that extra net worth is starting to stack up uh, it's only a little bit in that favor you know but the extra utility that comes out from that incredibly effective on the side of team spirit and yeah, Hellraisers, they're just playing as five. You can see them moving down as a group on the bottom lane, just trying to find the farm, you know, maybe trying to trick Spirit into to making a, a jump on whoever's furthest forwards. But you can see at the minute, both teams just, they don't want to be giving up anything. They're just playing together. They're just not giving anything away if they can help it. Thing is, now Team Spirit, they're the ones that have to be together. Their speed to move around the map, it's, it's not going to be enough because you all die very fast. And that's why they're... Uh, they're kind of sticking together. If it's a full five versus five, Team Spirit now with the RP, with the Aghanims on the Tiny and the Silver Edge, they actually have a really good shot at winning that one, even if they're the first ones to get jumped, even if they lose the Slark at the start of it. So now they, they're actually the ones being afraid of the pickoff potential of Hellraisers, which when you look at the uh, past of this game, it just hasn't been happening all that much. It was Team Spirit that were, when, that were getting the pickoffs and the fights, well, uh, Hellraisers were doing okay in those, right? But now it's, it's different. It's completely different with the Axis coming out and Team Spirit, this is scary for them. They're no longer stronger. Yeah, well, they're trying to put pressure on with the double catapult wave here on the top lane as well, but the fortification does come out. Creep waves going to be cleaned up by LOL. Has the trees, have that, has that avalanche as well to do some really good damage. But meanwhile, this is going on. You can see the... Hellraisers are more than happy with this distraction, putting pressure onto the tier 3 tower on the bottom lane. And now they're going to try and chase out onto Team Spirit now as well. Four staff, this is going to be a song here coming through from the Naga Siren. It looks like it's just going to be four staffs and nobody from the side of Team Spirit going to be caught just yet. Uh, it looks like they might actually have the Bane. Did he get it? No, he got the TP, but he got the TP back to base. Uh, Yotaro was like, is the Invoker there? Is the Invoker there? And uh, they, uh, they tell him, we haven't seen him. And he knows, yo, I might be hunted here. 3000 HP, Invoker can go through that one. That is the strength of the hero. He just can't do it with the uh, with the Hex. So you have to be careful. Though, still only level 20. You know, if he has had a little bit more in terms of levels, maybe it would be easier for him. But either way, Yotaro will survive. Hellraisers. That was a nice chase, but also beautiful disengage from Team Spirit. You're seeing how close these teams are, but at some point, Rob, someone will make a misstep and they will get completely obliterated. And I can't wait to see what that is going to be. Invoker now with the refresher. Slark dies 100%. You get hexed, you are dead. And let's see if uh, if Kiyotaka can make it happen. Yeah, but again, you can see the Team Spirit not giving up without a fight you know they are sticking close to the slark they're just saying okay if you want to come in you know we are going to try and you know keep that slark maybe use him as a little a bit of live bait but yeah see so uh, kiyotaka he's just getting himself around pushing this lane and again that bottom lane of racks is open the tier 2 tower on the top lane as well being pressured out of the slark gonna be able to pounce into that and just try and clean that up but it just seems like hellraisers they just have this push pull perfect on the map you know pushing uh or excuse me pulling Team Spirit in one direction while they push in the other to try and take this map control back and the Forge Spirits as well coming out from the Invoker going to be able to do a great job of that so we'll see what uh, Team Spirit's answer, answer to this is. 
Yeah, Team Spirit now, they are they are feeling the pressure right now. They're like, we want a big RP, we want a lot of trees flying towards the enemies, but Hellraisers, they're banging on the fact we can't get the pickoffs. The Hawk can rip someone apart with a Hex. Same is true with Invoker, especially with the Refresher being there. What the mid laners do before they start the series, they go into the lobby and they practice Invoker spells. So there's no way, no way in hell that he's going to be messing things up and you get a Dark backed off. If he gets the first Hex on you, you're just gone on uh, even on the Slark, and that is the tankiest hero that you have. Maybe the tiny can survive, but no one else on the side of Team Spirit will be surviving this uh, this invoker. Yeah, and Lol trying to do his best to deep push the lane here with the tree volley. Um, and it is going to be able to clean up the creep wave fairly quickly, but it just seems like the invoker is just going to hang back close to that where the T1 tower is on the bottom lane. You know, just continue to push it in again and again and again. And from this, I mean. The Slark now has the depth charge as well, so it, it, it's going to be a real treat in the fight if the Slark doesn't get locked down, so he can protect the rest of his team, you know, get that depth shroud off, protect the Shadow Dance, but like you say, if there's quick fingers coming out from the Invoker, it might be curtains for the Slark. Those are some big odds coming out from Hellraiser, so if you guys want to use them, go click on the banner below, get your $15 free. Or the uh, first bet if you are new on the Bed Boom website. Man, we haven't seen a fight for a very long time, but I can feel <laughs> the tension in this game, really. It is there, but no one really wants to go for a big move because the fight needs to be won for Team Spirit around the Roche. That is the yeah. thing. And Hellraisers, they're always somewhat close to it, but never too close to get caught uh, next to it because Team Spirit needs some time to take it down and Hellraisers, they can use that time to come over and use the song. If that is what happens, Team Spirit are going to get obliterated. On the other hand, if Team Spirit, they uh, get a whiff of Hellraisers close to the pit, they can catch one by one and just destroy them. So that is uh, that is one thing that you have to think about. So Team Spirit right now, they're going to show the Tiny on bot and go into the pit. But this has been seen. There's going to be a four-man smoke move up, yeah, from the side of Hellraisers, and it looks like the Invoker as well. Uh, should be able to catch up, or if not, just throw out Sunstrikes, help out the team that way. If you want to try and make this jump happen, I mean, this Roche, it's not going to be quick at all. Sunstrike's going to be there to scout it out as well. Yutaro, he sees the illusions. He has to pounce out the pit before Mero gets in. He gets a stomp off, but the Granny is going to be locked down as well. Granny snap fire. Do we have enough to take it down? It looks like there's going to be the Horn Toss back onto the Centaur, and the Centaur with a four staff of his own. The cookie comes out from the snap fire. It looks like they're just going to try and commit. They even lose the Centaur onto this. The Centaur's going to buy back, but you can see the Naga Siren, they just want to go straight into the pit and Yutaro, he's keeping himself away as the Invoker just continues to push out this bottom lane Mortal Kisses comes in, they try and snipe that Roshan but everything's going to be going the way of the side of the uh, there's a Dire, excuse me, and it looks like now, yeah, with the BKB TP out, coming out through from the collapse, but it looks like both supports going to be left out in the cold, Cookie comes out Maposhka, Nightmare, just onto the illusion but it looks like they're going to try and shift focus now, take down the Snapfire, Maposhka what's he going to be able to do, because there's going to be Yutaro again moving up onto these illusions while just the Invoker just continues to be an absolute pain in the arse here in this bottom lane with the Forge Bridge with the, the Alacrity onto the Catapult, pushing through onto the Larax, and again, the push-pull comes through, Yataro being pulled onto this lane while Hellraisers push their influence elsewhere on the map. Man, Hellraisers, they play that quite nicely. They lost the Centaur and he did buy back. But overall, it's not that big of a deal, really. Because you're consistently making Team Spirit, forcing them into a situation where they can make a mistake. They're not making a big blunder, Team Spirit. They only lost the Snap Fire, mind you. They didn't even lose the, uh, the Raxes. But at some point, you will panic. At some point, they will catch you. Yeah, or collapse. He's just, I mean, he's actually going to be seen. He has to go for the skewer away. Now the illusions are going to see him now as well. But Lal, with the rest of his team waiting behind, yeah, collapses to be forced back by these illusions. They will eventually, I say eventually, they might not even be eventually cleaned up here by the Slark because they are big, beefy illusions here. But the jump in, though, what are they going to be able to find? The BKB is out from Yutaro. Song is going to be used. But again, Yutaro going to be able to get himself around with the BKB. BKB on Lal now as well with the tree volley coming in. But it's just going to be onto the illusions. They do get the kill onto the Invoker. Do they want to try and go for more here? The RP is still available. Maybe if they can get the dive in the Horn Toss. Coming out now, the Sonk is down. Might be able to find Solo. Jump in from Lol. Avatos comes out now as well. That Haunt us, but the four staff again. And Solo, he's just trying to waste as much time as possible here for the three heroes rotating in. Moonlight Shadow even going to be used, committed. Just comes out the Stampede. It's not going to keep him alive, but Solo just wasted so much time after the Invoker goes down that the Invoker only dead for another minute or so. This Cadex cap saved him there for the uh, for the second on solo because he got horn tossed, but it didn't get over the uh, the Magnus, so he didn't get tossed in the air by the uh, by the tiny. But either way, there's one thing I want to talk about: how good of a sport Hellraisers are. They are the ones that get Roche, and they're like, this game is so even. 
and we don't want to take everything. So they leave the refresher shard in the pit for the Magnus to pick up. Because remember, <laughs> the song was uh, going strong. So it's not like Collapse, like I jump in, I uh, steal it. No, they forgot about it completely and just let Collapse get that one. And that is a bad move if, if you're Hellraisers because a double RP can change everything in this game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Collapse... We've not seen an RP in a little bit now, so he's got one. He's waiting for it to get it off. You know, he's got it. He's got that itchy finger going, and he's just waiting for the perfect opportunity here to catch two, three heroes out, get them up, drag them back right into the waiting arms of Team Spirit. Okay, Slark wants the the Aghanim's blessing, and then he wants another item. And I get it. He doesn't want to get rid of the boost. The movement speed around the map is very important for him. Very important for everyone on the side of Spirit. I actually wouldn't mind if the Slark gets like a Shadow Blade, man. Ability to move around the map undetected, I think is of the utmost importance. And would maybe allow him to kill the Invoker who doesn't have a BKB. Yeah, and lol, he's got that double damage rune as well as a Silver Edge, so... He's going to be on If he crits on, well, he gets the, the crit coming out of the Silver Edge. So that is going to be a massive amount of damage this time. He's going to be putting out if he catches anyone. But again, it, it just looks like Hellraisers, apart from the Invoker, that's just chuffed to be going for the split push. Everybody else inside of Hellraisers are playing together. You know, they're making sure that nobody gets caught out alone so they can follow up onto this gank if it does come through. And a lot on the line in this game, and you, you can see it from both teams, really. Like, who wins goes top three, who loses, you know, yeah. facing elimination. So it is uh, it is a very uncomfortable spot for uh, for both teams because they... I understand how it feels right now. Hellraisers are like, we don't see anything. And Team Spirit are... We see the map okay sometimes in this game, but the thing is we don't see the Invoker and the Naga Siren, which both can bring us down. So... You're just sweating in this game constantly. Like, where, they, where are they? Where are they? Where are they? You push out one lane, you survive, and you're super happy about it. And you're super happy about it, and it has been happening for 10, 15 minutes now that people aren't dying. The BKB comes out. It's going to be the double toss-up now as well. They get the kill onto the Invoker. The Voker has Beautiful. buyback. It's going to be a really good RP, but it's going to be only onto Mero as well as Solo. Do they have enough damage to take them down? They do, and that's going to be no buyback here for the center. Meanwhile, Yutaro, he's got that BKB. Might be able to get the kill onto the Mirana as well. Mirana has to go for that leap away as the BKB was out mid-song. He can't get the right clicks. Now he can. Cleans up onto Mirana. Mirana's just going to be gone. It did cost him the Magnus for that fight, but taking down three heroes may be able to force back a couple of buybacks here now as well. As it just looks like Hellraisers, that Invoker being way too far forward just led to, to Hellraisers, you know, being out of position and a great jump from Spirit to capitalize on that. And you can see the Bane even, he's got he's double fisting gems here, you know, one for each hand it looks like, just so it looks like he actually has eyes. Uh, the thing is, like, this is something that both teams have been facing for the past 15 minutes. You're like, why are they playing so defensively? Because of this. Mm -hmm. This is what can happen. Invoker steps out a little bit forward and he immediately dies with that and his teammates follow as well and now team spirit with those three heroes dead they can definitely push in all the lanes and set themselves up for success look at this now as well did they have any reveal was that cookie they are going to be able to get him a positive could be here with the fiends as well and that's going to be the death of the hag and that's going to be him down 90 seconds before he respawns does have the buyback but is that what he wants to force out i mean we said about going to the, the late game for the, the Naga, but apart from a couple of songs, it doesn't really feel like the hacks had the, the impact that he'd really want to have on this late game Naga Siren. The late game in Dota is pretty much 35 to 45 minutes. After that is the ultra late game where there's so many <laughs> items come out and you never know what's going to happen. It comes down to the jump. And this time around, Team Spirit got the jump. They're going to get the lead right mm -hmm. now. And they might even get multiple Araxes if the Hawk doesn't buy back. But if he does, then the gold lead will be uh, going in further. Yeah, look at this now as well. The Hex comes through onto the Tiny Lager. to be forced off a little bit further into the base of Kirith. He's just got... He's being right-clicked down by Yataro even while he tries to go with the BKB. He might be able to take down the Snapfire. They've got that Tiny. And where's the rest of it going to come through? The Song, who's going to be fast enough to get himself out. They've got the Lockdown here onto the Bane. Meposhki is just going to be caught out. They've got enough damage to take him down as well. So they do turn that on its head. You know, forcing out a good couple of kills here on the side of Hellraiser. But it cost them a buyback. So now Team Spirit, they're going to know this Naga Siren is vulnerable to a gank. And and if you do get that kill off, potentially they're looking towards another set of racks, or to your first set of racks, maybe even looking to just push straight onto tier fours. Jump is everything in this game. You jump in, you buy back on the Nagasari. The thing is, even a nice silence came out from the Centaur, and 
he didn't get the hoof stomp off, but it doesn't matter. The invoker has vision, he axes up the tiny, he kills him. That is big, mm -hmm. right? Immediately, as a core dies, you have lost the fight. You need to run away, and you're getting ran down. But, of course, the Spirit, they are, uh, they are fast enough. They get themselves out, and they made a conscious decision. We're going to give away some of the heroes for the buyback on the Naga Siren and set ourselves up for success later on. To get the drag back, yeah, they're gonna be able to get right on top of the Marana here now as well. I think that was the RP committed just to get the lockdown onto him, and the refresh comes out. Mero's not gonna be able to get himself away through this one. Yutaro wants to chase down, gonna be able to get the pounce again stacks. onto the Marana, and the damage coming through. Yeah, even broken, he's just gonna be able to come through and break the rest of the team. And he's just diving around left, right, and center. Yutaro cleaning up on his own, and now he might try and go. There's gonna be the refresh from Collapse, and now. Well, Mirror Image is going to be used by the Nag Siren as well. Do they have the reveal? As it looks at like the Invoker, does he take down Collapse? He's got that Hex off. He's got the Cold Snap into the Death Lane Blast, but the damage is not going to be enough to get the kill and Collapse. He's going to survive for a little bit longer. Might be able to get himself right back to the Fountain as well to regen up, and the Sun Strike won't be there. So they're not going to be able to get the kill onto the Magnus. The Witch Blade would have killed him, but the Sleep comes out just in time to save him. Oh. That was. That was so close for Hellraiser to get the kill, but it doesn't matter. Yotoro now, he is so damn good. Man, he has been playing this tournament so well that it's just amazing, you know, that he is the he has died once in this game. He was 0-1, and now he's 13-1. Next Roche in 19 seconds, Hellraisers are going to be ready for that one. So even with the 15k gold lead, it is not over. Hellraisers can still fight, and we saw what the Invoker can do next time around. In the fight, he has the Refresher and Team Spirit, if they only knew that Roche was going to spawn, they would be there and taking it down before the Invoker has uh, all of his uh, items in double and spells as well. Yeah, uh, well, that's what you, your Bane's supposed to be for. You know, you position five at this part of the game, 54 minutes in. If the Roche is down, you sit them in the pit as a living ward. That's pretty much, you know, the, the full use of a position five at 54 minutes in. And this is... Yeah, we're we're going to be seeing tier five items coming out if the, this game carries on like this. And... Collapse, he gets to get... Invoke just goes down again. He's been caught out of position so many times in the last, what, 15, 20 minutes that not all, not every time he was killed for it, but it just seems to be that, you know, Invoker, he just needs to be a little bit more aware of what's going on. It's been a long day for the players, especially Hellraisers, you know, coming through um, uh, the first series into this. This game's going an hour long as well, being a full best of three. So, may, you know, you can forgive him for a little bit of a lapse in focus here, but the Invoker, yeah, just maybe needs to have someone that holds to hold his hand as he does try and roam around and look for those split pushes. He's trying to look for kills, and mm. Team Spirit, after what happened in one fight, they're a little bit more confident right now, so they're going uh, a little bit more aggressively. Yeah, and you can see here as well, Antares, there is going to be the Pounce as well, so the, there is going to be the Leash, and it's not going to be able to get himself away from it, it has to wear, wait for that to wear off. Lol, taking a lot of damage from he the can't blink. Antares, he's out of mana. Yeah, he can't, and uh, Dark gets a kill on Tamira, though, while Pick. this is going on. Okay, so so now even the uh, the Skyrath Mage is itemizing to go for Pickoffs because he has a Shadow Blade. He couldn't blink out there because of the Radiance, but Slark stopped chasing for him. He just assumed that the uh, Skyrath Mage got the uh, got the TP out. We knew that he couldn't do it because he had it on cooldown, but of course Slark didn't have that info. Yeah, look at this, the RP now as well. It is just going to be onto Solo, the Stampede, but he's not going to be able to get himself away from this dead for 107 seconds here on the Marana. And the big man's back up, Yutaro, straight into the pit with his Radiance, with the double damage coming through now as well. Look at how quickly Roshan is just going to melt while this goes on. Uh, but uh, they have a Sunstrike and they have a Song. RP, not available. Uh, Hellraisers, they know this, They, ah, but they're not coming over. They are not. They are putting more emphasis in pushing out the lanes and being like, okay, it's more about the vision. It's more about where we fight rather than what kind of resources the enemy have. Slark, he needs to give this refresher shard to someone else because uh, it does share cooldown with the orb. Yeah, he, he's going to pass it off now to Collapse, so we're going to see another double RP um, once the, the timing on the, the original RP does cool off. But Yutaro, he just wants to go. Uh, Collapse, he's keeping himself back. He's helped protecting the, the bottom. I mean, they, they, they did lose uh, Rax here on this bottom lane. So the pressure now will start to mount even more on this bottom lane. And it looks like that's just what the, the Invoker wants to do here. You know, throwing the Fortress itself. He just keeps this little bit of a rat here on the bottom lane. Constantly pulling Team Spirit away from it. But they did still get the Roshan. So this is not really going to be a major objective that Hellraisers can get off pulling Team Spirit towards this bottom part of the map. And I would rather the Tiny have the Aegis, to be honest. Because for me, he is the better tower push. Slark takes way yeah. too much time and gives the ability to the enemies to, to make something happen. Plus... 
tiny, you know, if he has the Aegis, he can he can just stand his ground and the Slark is protecting him with the Depth Shroud. But let's see if Yatoro can do it on his own. Yeah, just look at that Rax go down. Three right clicks coming through from LOL. I know a few from Yatara, but yep. just major damage coming through from that tiny. Like you say, he's just going to be able to wreck these buildings and how Hellraiser is going to respond to this. Okay, I guess what is happening right now, Yatoro with the Aegis, he positions himself super aggressively and he gives the night vision to his tiny. So then the tiny can uh, come close when Yatoro mm -hmm. kind of tells him, okay, everything is clear. No one is jumping you. Come in, get these Raxes down. Yeah, but look at this though. They do get this um, onto the Slark. Slark, what's he going to try and do with this as well? Just backing himself away again, clearing up the illusions, but Yutaro just continues to go onto the rack. The cookie comes out, even with the the, uh, the Hex. Going to be able to get him out of danger though, and Yutaro just going to be able to move himself away. 30 seconds before the Shadow Dance is back up. He has that Depth Shroud. He has that Refresher as well, so he's going to have the double Depth Shroud, the, the double uh, Shadow Dance if he needs it, as well as four Pounces. This is the, uh, I mean... Team Spirit has been playing so well under the night time. And, you know, I was first, ah, maybe the Tiny should have the Aegis, but no. Yeah, actually, they uh, they did a really good job. Itoro comes in first, he goes behind the tower, sees everything, and very hard for Hellraisers to uh, to find a fight for themselves. In a minute, we're gonna have tier 5 items, and Hellraisers, they might get pushed out of their triangle. This is gonna be big if they are. So that's mm -hmm. why they've placed down Vision, and they're like, this tier 2 cannot fall. If we get pushed out in our base, we're just gonna lose on the back of the Aegis. So they will mount up a fight here team spray they should be ready for it they can even wait for the top and the mid lane to push in yeah and naga siren as well wants to go towards that daedalus how's he looking silver edge into the hex with the the boots of travel too is he gonna be able to set up a song that we see kiritaki's on top he's gonna be able to drop a really nice meteor but everyone else moves away and now the bkb comes up mystic flow is gonna be off the mark the song gonna be used here but everybody on the side of team spirit has bkb is just gonna be able to clean up oh the slack didn't actually get his bkb off just yet but nobody's contesting onto him. The Hex comes out. Tornado not going to connect. The Posh going on his back lines. He's got his back. And uh, Yutaro just goes in. He says, okay, song's down. Let's go. We want to push him. The uh, tree volley comes out. And Mero gets a little bit too far forward. But That's really, big. Really nice. Basically, great RP, though. The drag back onto him. Going to be able to get in the Invoker as well. The force stuff away from Antares. But they're going to be able to chase once again onto Solo. So underneath that tier two tower, just being right click down. Mero there as well, taking a whole lot of punishment. And it's still going to be coming through. He has that refresher shot. If he needs it, he'll collapse. He's going to be swallowing it now so he can go. He's going to be able to get another RP now onto the Nargisar. It's going to be the hack, the damage to the right. Cyclist coming through, just absolutely cleaned up and only Mero alive. And this might be, do they want to go even further now as well? They do have buybacks, three buybacks from, from the side of Hellraisers. Mero, they want to turn, they're going to be able to get a really nice lockdown onto the Magnus. Magnus is going to go down, but has a buyback of its own. Chase comes out, Tornado, was that going to connect? Sunstrike, they're going to be off the mark, the cookie comes out, forcing back onto the vein. A lot of damage coming through onto the center. The center are going to be cleaned up, has that buyback once again if he needs it. Now Yutaro with a refresh, he's going to try and go for the pounce onto the Nagasaren. What damage can he do here though? Nagasaren just trying to force stuff himself away, and it's like the Invoker will be taken down. And can he carry on going onto this? It looks like you do want to carry on going. Mero could be able to get the stampede off now with the stomp onto the tiny. The tiny's going to be dead. But again, by from everyone inside the team's rate. Looks like the team's going to be able to get themselves in with a the boost of travel right back into the side of the Hellraiser's base. And looks like they're going to be able to take down these illusions from the Naga Siren. And everybody's just going to give it a little bit of a chill. While the Naga Siren, he throws out the sleep from the song. And it just goes for the reset. Oh man, that gobble up on the... Uh... On three people, and I like how Team Spirit approached that one. They just stood back. They knew they shouldn't get towards the tier two, and other racers knew they had to go for a fight. So they went a little bit too deep, and then when they started getting out, when Yatoro was pushing them back, bum comes out the gobble up with the Magnus on three of their heroes. The RP connects, and that is where the fight and possibly this game ends. Yeah, Yutaro, the Aegis is going to be reclaimed, but within the Shadow Dancer as well, he's got that regen, just going to be able to get himself out of dodge if he needs it. The tree Volley comes in once again, Amaro has to be really careful. Everybody on the side of Hellraisers now, apart from the Marana, has no buyback available, so they need to be real careful about being caught out here. He bought a rapier. He disassembled his radiance and he bought a rapier for it. So he doesn't care about the illusions any longer. He just wants to rip people apart. I mean, look at his damage now with 24 stacks. I mean, wh what is that? That is a Slark that bursts you down. It's like a PA that cannot die and has so much mobility.
Yeah, it was it 25 permanent, 22 on the temporary, and yep. AC and Moonshard, the end power coming out there as well for the extra damage. He's just ripping heroes apart left, right, and center now as well. The Indus, he's going to pop here, but Yutaro, he just wants to win the game here and now. Even the Wraith Pack being boys, he's just to be able to take that down immediately. The Golgob comes out, great RP onto the two heroes, onto the two big cores, and they're going to be dragged back into this fight as well. Did he want to be able to take down Scarlet Mage? Nargus Siren going to be tossed up into the air, killed off, and this is just going to be it. GG will be called as everybody on the side of Hellraisers are going to start to fall here game is over and there's nothing they can do because they have no buybacks available uh, we uh we got to see some tier 5